All right, so in this problem, we have three different vectors, and we're defining um, capital A to be this set of vectors, right? Um, so we have V1, V2, and V3, and this problem wants us to show that they're linearly independent, that they span R3, and that A times X, some vector X, um, equals B has a unique solution for every single B in R3. All right, so um, I kind of color coded out the three different things we want to prove here. Um, and you might be thinking to yourself, this is a lot. This is a lot to take in. Like, how are we going to prove all three of these things? So I'd like to uh, bring your attention to the big theorem, which might just be one of the dumbest name theorems I've ever heard of in my life. But I guess it's the foundation of linear algebra or whatever. Um, let's move on. So we're going to say that there's some A. Um, that is a set of vectors from 1 to n um, in Rn, then we can say that the following are equivalent. So if either one of these, if any of these things is true, then the rest of the things that are listed here are also true, right? So we have A spans Rn, A is linearly independent, and A times X equals B has a unique solution for all B in Rn. All right, so uh, do we see any similarities between the big theorem and what we're trying to prove? Hopefully you do. So um, I'm going to show you how if you just prove that something is linearly independent, you can also prove these two other things, right? So how do we prove that something is linearly independent? Um, this has to do with matrices. So if you guess row operations, simplifying and trying to see how things work out, then you guess correctly. Big, big gold star for you. So row operations are the best. Also, sorry, this is supposed to be a negative. Dear, let me make sure these, these other numbers are correct. These other numbers are correct, okay. Um, five, two, negative six. So, one way to figure out whether something is linearly independent is we want to see whether AX equals zero has, um, only the trivial solution. And what do I mean by trivial solution? So um, we know that if you multiply um, any vector x by, you know, 0, 0, 0, you'll end up with the 0 vector, right? Um, and so if something is linearly independent, that means that none of the vectors that we provided were redundant. We needed every single one of them. For linearly independent sets of vectors, um, you can't represent one of the vectors with a linear combination of the other two vectors, right? So as long as our solution for um, this system of equations is, you know, x1 equals 0, x2 equals 0, x3 equals 0, uh, we know that our problem or our um, vectors are linearly independent. So let's do some row root, uh, operations. So I see that 1. Let's multiply it by negative 7 so we can cancel out that 7 there. So negative 7, 0. Oh, sorry. What am I doing? Uh, we're multiplying row 1 by negative 7, so negative 7, negative 21, negative 35, and then 0. So we would describe this as row 2 minus 7, row 1, and that goes back into row 2. So we have 1, 3, 5. We're not changing the first row, but we are changing the second row. Uh, so 7 plus negative 7 is 0. 0 plus negative 21 is negative 21. 2 plus negative 35 is negative 33, 0. All right, cool, but uh, your journey does not end here. We have to do some more row operations. So I still like that one, so let's multiply it by two so we can cancel with that negative two. So two, six, 10, zero. This row operation is row three plus two row one, back into row three. So we're not changing row one or row two but we are changing row three, so two plus negative two, zero, six plus one, seven, four, zero. Okay, um, let's do some more modifications. This time we're gonna do 
we're going to do some stuff uh, with row 2 and row 1. Um, let's multiply row 3 by 7 to cancel out that 21. So 7, or if we want to do the whole thing, 0, 21, 12, 0. And this is defined as row 2 plus 3, row 3, and we put that back into row 2. So we're not changing row 1, we're not changing row 2, uh, we are changing, or we're not changing row 3, we're changing row 2, 0, 0, uh, shoot, negative 21, I think, yeah, that sounds about right, all right, let me move the big theorem out of the way, it's just so big and takes up so much space, okay, um, so this is almost in echelon form, but we still have to do just like one little switcheroo, we're going to switch row 2 with row 3 to get I'm honestly just going to copy and paste this. Once you do enough of these problems, you just get tired of writing the matrix all over. So we're just going to little do a little swap a do. Okay. Um, so here is our matrix. Um, this is where uh, we figure out whether this is linearly independent. Okay. So if we set this up as system of equations again, so we get x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 equals 0, 7x2 plus 4x3 equals 0, and then negative 21x3 equals 0. Okay, uh, so this looks like a triangular form of equations, so let's just back substitute by solving. So we can solve for x3 here, right? So we say x3, um, well, the only thing we can multiply negative 21 by to get 0 is 0, so it's a we get x3 equals 0. We set up the next equation. God, the big theorem is really just like in the way. Go over here. Okay. So now we set up the next equation. 7x2 plus 4x3 equals 0. We've already solved for x3, so let's plug that in. We just get 0, so that whole term goes away. 7x2 equals 0. Looks like x2 is also going to be 0. If you see where this is going, give yourself a little pat on the back. But if not, we're going to keep going. x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3 equals 0. All right, so we've determined x3 is 0. Get rid of her. x2 is 0. Get rid of her. So we have x1 equals 0. This one, we didn't even have to divide anything by it. We just straight up got x1 equals 0. So this is what we defined as the trivial solution, right? Um, and because this is a triangular form, as you'll recall maybe, um, triangular forms only have one solution, and that is, in this case, the trivial solution. So we've determined that these vectors are linearly independent, and since we've determined that they're linearly independent, our big theorem, which finally came in, came in clutch, we're finally coming back to her, we're saying that since... Uh, since this is true, this is also true, and that's also true. And a really important distinction to make here, I don't think I made it before, is that, um, change color, we need these two ends to be the same, right? So the number of vectors within our set should be the same as whatever R we're looking at, right? So um, in this example, we had three vectors, and we were looking at R3, right? So that's why we were able to use the big theorem here.